What's going on everybody? So I want to start this video off with some stats because that's really where the inspiration for this video came from was I was looking at problems run through the Ultimate League uh, so far week one and then through the club championship and noticed that Skimbo compared to everybody else who problem ran into Skimbo held problem to the least amount of yards per carry in Watching his game again, he really did hold him in check. It was a very defensive battle between both players. Problem only scored two offensive touchdowns, and one was set up by that user pick with Anthony Barr, where he ran it all the way back to like the five yard line. So both players played really good defense in this game. Problem did end up coming out with the win, but I kind of wanted to go over how Skimbo was able to have success holding, you know, Problem's rushing attack in check compared to basically everybody else Problem's been running into. So. The way Skimbo was doing that was he was coming out and running a lot of this cover 4 drop show 2 at a 3-4 odd. And what I want you guys to notice is where he positions his players pre-snap because it is very important. Now notice he clicks on the cornerback on the outside and he brings the safety up into the box. So he wants this cornerback, he brought him in because he wants him to have the inside leverage on the outermost receiver. He doesn't want him to get sealed off the edge. He wants him to be able to shoot into the backfield and cause havoc. Now he brought up this other safety right here because of the same thing. He's running this cover four drop and if you guys don't know cover four this year the safeties they're gonna play basically run first. Their run fits they're gonna react to the run at the snap of the ball they're not gonna backpedal like you will see out of something like a cover two. They're gonna stay flat-footed eyes in the backfield and they're gonna read and react to wherever the runs going. Now the downside of a cover four generally is that the outside cornerbacks who are dropping back into those deep quarter zones on the outside they will backpedal so a lot of people will say you want to run cover four for interior runs because the safeties react very quickly but then cover four is bad for the outside runs because the cornerbacks backpedal and they can't make a play on the ball until you know the running backs 10 yards downfield and so a lot of people will say run cover two against outside runs because in cover two the cornerbacks are in those flat zones and they do a much better of reading and crashing down aggressively into the backfield to stop the running game but what Skimbo does is he goes with the best of both worlds so he has the cover four so that the safeties react to the run and what he was doing on the outsides was he was taking his corners out of those deep quarter zones and he was either manning them up on the outermost receivers or he was putting them in flat zones he, he did it both ways but either way is going to achieve the same result in that they're now going to have much better run support on the outside. So he's got the best of both worlds in that he's got the quarter zones from his safeties playing the run and he's got his cornerbacks on the outsides playing the run. And that's what you're going to see right here. Problem tries to go with an HP stretch out of this single back ace slot to the right side, the double receiver side. And you're going to see right here, he motions in Paul Krause to try and get him a good block angle. And he actually picks up the blocks right here, as you can see. He gets all the blocks, and really, if his receiver, Paul Krause in this case, he's going to get block shedded, but if everybody holds their blocks, the first guy that Skimbo can realistically tackle problem with is going to be this backside cornerback who's crossing the entire formation. So that just kind of goes to show how tough this running scheme really is to stop. But what you're going to see is Paul Krause on the outside does get block shedded here, and Skimbo is going to be able to click on and make a play, make a tackle. Fournette still gets a truck animation, falls forward for two or three yards. But the important thing is, although the cornerback gets blocked here, he got blocked as soon as the play started because he crashed in. So because he crashed in, he got engaged as soon as the play started, which gave him a quicker time to be able to block shed. You know, the sooner you engage, the sooner you can block shed. Otherwise, if Skimbo doesn't hot route him into either man coverage or a flat zone right there, and he's backpedaling, he's probably getting blocked at around the 50 yard line and probably hasn't even engaged yet. And in that case, problem gets the advantage of basically being able to cut whichever way he wants inside outside, wherever Paul Krause basically blocks his receiver into. And then it just becomes a whole lot harder to make a tackle in that open space right here. A lot less time for problem to react. He basically had no choice. He couldn't try to swerve or juke or do a stop and go. He just had to go forward and hope for a truck with Leonard Fournette. And in that case, Skimbo's defender was able to wrap up and make a tackle. So just a very small thing right there that Skimbo did that put his cornerback in a much better position to make a play on problems running back on that HP stretch. Now right here a little later in the game and we're going to be looking at problem running with an HB dive and now I want to kind of go to the throwback all the way back to the Madden challenge go back to master gamers single back tight slots and this is a great example of really what an HB dive wants to do you're going to see master go with the HB dive here to Marshawn Lynch and you really want to hit that cutback lane a lot of people want to hit this cutback lane on the left side and cut it right up the field right there and he ends up going untouched and this is also important this is against Spoto 
and you see what happens. Spoto in a two deep shell and you see his safeties backpedaling and spreading out at the snap. And this is why being in that cover four and having that safety help is important because they're basically running themselves out of the play. And now it's easy. Look at the, the offensive lineman just has to push him out to the outside. He's already sealed off. That guy has no way of getting around the offensive lineman and making a play. He, he literally ran himself out of the play. So that's why covered shell even is important in the run game if some people might not think it is. And so what you're going to see right here uh, from Skimbo is once again you see the safety brought up into the box on the right side along with the cornerback brought on the interior and you're going to see problem go with an HB dive and that cutback lane is not going to be there. He's going to have a little bit of a hole to the left here uh, but what you can notice Bo Jackson actually runs right by uh, Skimbo's linebacker and goes to block the safety so the cutback lane wasn't there regardless but even if Bo Jackson were to block that linebacker the cornerback came crashing in. You can see this receiver right here looking to cut off that cornerback, but he can't because Skimbo had moved him so far inside pre-snap, he had that inside leverage. So now Problem has no choice. He's got to go right up the middle. He has a little bit of a hole, but what you can see is from the cover four, Skimbo's got that safety shooting the gap. And if it was a cover two, he'd be backpedaling way back here. In this case, he's attacking downhill. Skimbo, or problem rather, once again, just has to go with the truck. Ends up getting a truck, falling forward. Fournette's a problem. He's always falling forward, still picks up four yards. But that was great user defense right there from Skimbo in terms of knowing where to place his guys pre-snap and making the right adjustments to adjust to that running play. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it helped you guys out a little bit. If you guys have any suggestions for any breakdowns from Ultimate League or the club championship even, I'd be more than happy to hear them. If you guys did enjoy the content, definitely be sure to subscribe. It really would mean the world to me. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, guys, take it easy.